Is that first thing in the morning? Did you get your chores first thing in the morning? Did you get it first thing in the morning? Hmm? Just give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Pew. Go get it. Come on. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that, good boy. Give me that, Joy. Give me that, Joy. Give me that. You want to take your toy upstairs? Take your toy upstairs. You're gonna go. Oh, you're gonna sit right there and tear it up, huh? <laughs> the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I get a lot of trolls on here. Yesterday there was a guy that popped up and he wanted to comment on several videos on installing the stretch belt on a 1.5 liter. And this guy was getting to the point where, but saying, you know, insinuating that I don't know how I'm, how to do what this and that and I guess it wasn't even it's not even really belligerent it's just it bothered me because the guy's trying to tell me how I don't know how to do my job and he's trying to tell me how his buddy or somebody else showed him the right way on how to install a stretch belt on a 1.5 liter eco boost that doesn't have a tensioner some of them have tensioners and some of them don't and what we're going to do when we get to the shop this morning is we're going to pull up a service manual. We're going to see what the service manual says via Ford. There might be another way to do it. There's a lot of different ways to do things that the manufacturer doesn't specify. But I'm damn sure not going to have somebody come and tell me that I don't know what I'm doing. Because his buddy or somebody else showed him how to do it. And he thinks what his buddy says is Bible. You see the new puppy? If some of you didn't catch the story on the community chat, Grandma was on the local Facebook page and there was a lady that had gotten that dog off the street and she took it to her home, but she's already rescued like five dogs. So she's tapped out for what she can handle. And can you imagine having that many dogs not being able to go anywhere on vacation or anything because they ain't nobody gonna take five dogs and then if you have to board those dogs, It'd be in like $35, $40 a day for five dogs. And let's just say you go on a normal vacation where you're going for just a five-day work week. That you end up, actually it's like a total of six that they're keeping the dogs. Maybe seven. You know, every single day at $40 a dog. And there's five dogs. That is, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a lot of money. If, when you do the math by the end of the week. So... Especially if you don't have a family member that you ain't going on vacation ever. Or you're just going to have to suck it up and pay the money. So it's one of those situations where you know, if you don't want to spend $1,400 in boarding fees for seven days, the dog's being with somebody. I mean, you got to you got to figure out what you want to do with your life. Are you going to have somebody come to your house and sit at your house? You know, what if you're a rescue and you're in a, in a I don't know town home where you're like crazy and you've got an apartment and you're doing this stuff you're screwed you are screwed so i commend this lady for doing what she does and um she ended up taking the dog to her house and she put on facebook hey look i picked up this dog it's out, it was on the street uh tried to have it scanned they, they wouldn't scan it and grandma seen it grandma said i'll take the dog i'll help you out i got room to rescue or you know sit or temporary housing until the owner comes forward or permanent housing whatever um and she tried to take it she took it by the police station they finally scanned it they said there's no chip then tried to take it to the pound or past the local shelter or something like that say if you know if anybody ends up looking for this dog i have this dog and then we decided that we would uh share the responsibility of taking care of the dog the dog stayed at our house last night the dog was just a joy to to deal with um 
He's got a good personality and stuff like that. He did get me in the, at the bridge of the nose. Uh, he likes to jump and put his nose to your nose. And I knocked that off to where he barely did it at all other than this morning when I was putting my socks on trying to get ready for work. He came up and got me with his bottom teeth right in the bridge of my nose. And It's a puppy thing. He only looks like he's five or six months old, seven months old, something like that. He's still got a light hint of puppy breath. It pops up every once in a while. But he's a pretty cool dog overall. He's scared of the cat. He doesn't He doesn't really know what to think of with the cat. So he tries to walk all the way on the other side of the room if the cat's in the room to get away from the cat. And he'll sit there and bark at the cat because he's confused. He slept in between me and the missus last night in the bed. He's a good bed partner, but he just woke up at 2 o'clock and woke me up at 2 o'clock looking at me in my face. And I was like, oh, i get the puppy kisses. And then kind of cleared him a little spot so he could get comfortable. And he went back to sleep and woke up like an hour later and woke me up again. And laid his head across my chest. And then he laid on top of me. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. So I see how this is going. He's taking a, quite the liking to me. And uh, I don't mind it. He's a cool dog. The thing is, I get attached to animals very, very easy, and I'd hate to... <laughs> I would hate to feel bad the owner come forward, and I'm already attached to this dog, you know, so it's, it's tough. Let's get to the shop so we can look at these directions and put this to bed with this troll about, oh, you're wrong. All you do is pull the alternator bolts out and rotate the alternator this way or that way. There's no room to rotate the alternator any kind of way, but you can move it a little bit maybe. But it's a lot of work to take one bolt out, take another bolt out, take a through bolt out of the side, loosen the pivot bolt, rotate the alternator forward to slide a belt around there when I can just simply, I'm good enough to do it now where I don't even need tools. I can just take that stretch belt, route it around kind of where it needs to go. It's gonna be halfway off of the harmonic balancer and rotate the harmonic balancer and as it goes to slide forward, it slowly starts to stretch and it pops right on the ribs. Uh, I don't even need tools anymore to do it. It's a heck of a lot faster doing it with somebody seasoned like myself that's done it a bunch of times and trying to take an alternator loose and spin this out of the way and rotate that down. It's it's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? That's not even in the directions at all, nowhere. So you telling me that I'm telling people to do it wrong is ridiculous. I'm telling people how to do it by the book. So don't tell me I'm wrong. You just found a different way to do it. You know, trolls or people on here that think they know everything and they have the exact answer for it, just they boil my fucking blood because they are, they're, they're scum, you know? And, and they, oh, this is, this is the way. This is the, shut the fuck up. All right, let's look at this real quick. Put this shit to bed. All data. Repair. We'll look at like a 2017 Ford truck escape 1.5 turbo. That's what it was on on the video. And let's type in drive belt. Let's see what they say. Removal and replacement. Accessory drive belt. Take the bottom cover off. On early build vehicles with a tensioner, remove the engine mount. So you can get to the tensioner to remove the tension on the belt right here. Right here. On early build vehicles with a tensioner, remove the bolts for the accessory drive. And I guess they want you to slip it back over the belt when you go to put it back on. Now, on late build vehicles with a tensioner, cut the accessory drive and remove used general equipment knife. Huh. So if there's... Why would they want you to cut that if they want you to pull the bolts out of the alternator to release tension on the belt so you can remove the belt from the vehicle? They say just cut the belt, which tells me there's no alternator removal procedure. Let's just keep going, though. 
on early build vehicles with a tensioner install the bolts an accessory drive belt tensioner and accessory drive belt and it gives you some more instructions here early build vehicles with a tensioner install the mount on late build vehicles with a tensioner remove the bolt right here on the side of the front cover on late build vehicles without a tensioner position the accessory drive belt tool tools and belt to be installed huh so they put like a little loop thing right here it's like an aftermarket accessory kit that you can screw into the front cover and then it's like a piece of stock just a round piece of, uh, of metal and it goes up and it kind of keeps the belt in its spot as you're turning it around to stretch it onto the let's let's continue on on late build vehicles without a tensioner while using the accessory drive belt rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise and install the belt oh really after installation remove the guide wire and nut make sure the stud bolt is still tightened to specification after installation verify the accessory belt is correctly seated on all pulleys on late build vehicles without a tensioner, remove the guide wire tool and nut. Verify the accessory drive belt is correctly seated on all pulleys. Put the lower cover back on. People, there's more than one way to do something. But the one thing you shouldn't do is go to a professional that does this every single day that's followed by thousands and thousands of people and they're trying to teach other people this and this is literally what they shit eat and breathe on how to do their job. Probably not a good thing because you're going to look like a fool when they're done slapping you on the behind because you thought Charlie, your friend, or whoever you're tagging or these other creators and stuff like that knew more and all they did was just know a different way. It wasn't the way to do it or the only way to do it. Having a good day, my friend. Be blessed.